Now he got his boys. He ready to take his boys to a party. Luke 22. He ready to take them to a party because they're about to or they're supposed to be getting ready to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread for the Passover. So it is supposed to be that they are preparing for a good time. But in the midst of preparing for a good time, somebody decides, matter of fact, two of them decide that they're going to be used by the devil. Thank God I don't see it. Two of them decide that they're going to be used by the devil. One of them is said that Satan entered. So that means that something opened the door for Satan to get in. Listen to what I say. Something opened the door for Satan to get in because it said he entered. So that means that he was once outside, but now he has the opportunity to enter. So be careful what you open the door to, y'all. Be careful to what conversations you entertain, y'all. Be careful, huh? You're going to mess around and open a door. And then the next thing you know, you done sold Pastor Lee out. You done told him exactly where she at. She live out there on 134. Mm -hmm. So he enters in. This is all happening on the road to the party. All this is going down on the road to the party now. To the time of celebration. As to where they were supposed to be getting ready to celebrate the Passover. Which means they made it over something. Now don't you let the devil trick you right. on your way to your Passover. Uh -huh. Don't you let the enemy trick you on your way to your Passover. Something good about to happen, but he's trying to get you. Amen. 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 On their way to the celebration. On their way to giving God victory for bringing them out of some of the worst situations they had not been in. One of them mess around because the enemy always lurking now. The Bible says he goes to and fro throughout the earth. Hmm? Uh-huh. It says he's seeking whom he may devour. So therefore, he has his eyes out on anybody that's traveling with Jesus. He's watching the pack to see who's not committed. Who's just made a decision. Those are the first ones he's going to get. The ones that's made a decision. Because when they just made a decision, they're teeter-totting. They're not hooked in like they need to be. They're not sold out on the fact that this is their home. They're not sold out on the fact that I'm their woman of God. They're not sold out on it, see? So that's the one that he's looking for. And so it says he enters into Judas. What happened to Judas in order for him to enter in? Well, the scripture had previously told what happened to Judas. He got mad about that Mary Magdalene's situation. He got mad about the money situation because he couldn't control it. Huh? Judas, I got you today. He got mad because he couldn't control the money situation. Now, Jesus made a decision that he didn't like as it related to the money situation. You got the bag, but Jesus is the leader of the bag. It's not yours for you to control. You are just a steward. You are just a over, you're just watching over it, but you don't control it. So Jesus makes a decision to allow Mary Magdalene to pour oil on his feet, which was supposed to be expensive oil, and he lets her pour it on his feet, and Judas gets mad about it because he can't control it. So now he's still walking with the pack, but he got an issue. He's offended. So now, Satan has the ability to enter. And as soon as Satan entered, he left them 
when he started collaborating with the murderers. The murderers were not even in actuality of certainty who Jesus was. That is the reason why Judas had to give the kiss. They did not even know really, and the reason they didn't know really is because those that were walking with him looked so much like him. Because they were saying what he said and doing what he was doing. So what tells the story on whether you are with Trim or not is whether you're doing what Trim is doing. So see, if Trim ain't committing adultery, you ain't got no business committing adultery. If Trim ain't lying, you ain't got no business lying. If Trim ain't shucking and jiving, you ain't got no business shucking and jiving. See, your business, didn't we read it earlier in the scripture? I told y'all to watch the Bible, right? Didn't it say it earlier that your business gonna expose you? See, how you you handle stuff, your mannerism is going to tell on you. It's going to get you. So now, Judas, that's what he said. He go over there with them. Mm-hmm. But remember now, he went over there with them. But he still wouldn't leave Jesus there. He still wouldn't leave Jesus there. Want me to prove it? After he went and told them what he told them and made the deal with them for the money, he went right back to the table. Wasn't he sitting at the table when they were doing the Passover? Hmm? He was, wasn't he? Let's prove it. Jesus said, one of you <laughs> that is sitting here is going to betray me. So he went out and did what he did, but he came back in. He wouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. But see, let me show y'all something. You had Peter too. Let's dissect it. Now let's go to Peter. Jesus had to deal with Judas and he had to deal with Peter before the party. Peter's situation was, was not an issue of Satan entering him, but it was a lack of confidence, a fear. That Peter had. Peter had this fear of people, of man. So when they came to him to say, Weren't you with Jesus? Uh, uh, uh. Because he had a fear of dying. So he said, No, uh, uh-uh. I don't want y'all mad at me. You understand? You know, uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. I went with him. No, I went with him. See, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it's a whole different perspective. You have to know what you're dealing with between the Judas spirit and the Peter spirit. Two different ones. He tells him, he says, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. He wants to sift you. Why? Because he knows that there are some things inside of you. There are some stuff that you are housing, Peter, that is nesting on the inside of you that needs to be delivered. And Satan sees it. And because he sees it, he is going to sift you, which means that he's going to start turning every one of those areas. So you're fearful. <clears throat> Let me turn a fear. Ooh, so you insecure. <clears throat> Let me turn insecurity. Ooh, so you are doubtful. <clears throat> Let me turn doubt. See, it's sifting. It's sifted. He said he desires to sift you because of the things that are on the inside of you that needs to be worked out. He says, but what's going to rescue you is I have prayed for your what? What did he tell him? For his faith. See? I prayed for your faith because he said it's your faith. It's in your belief system that is going to bring you out, Peter. Judas going to die in hills. Peter going to always come out. His faith. Jesus said, I prayed for your faith. See, you can always tell whether you are dealing with a Judas or a Peter. Peter will be the one where fear will grip them and they'll be scared. You know, they, they have no scared. They'd be fearful of what somebody will say. You know, they don't want to make them mad and that kind of stuff like that. When you're dealing with that type of person, that's a Peter right now. That's a Peter. But if you can ever keep dealing with them and keep ministering to them and keep saying and encouragement to them and they get faith on the inside, 
inside of them, that faith will help them raw up. And they'll be able to conquer that that they've been struggling with. They'll get over the fact that they are trying to be a people pleaser. They'll get over the fact that they are scared of what people are going to say and scared of what people are going to do. They'll get over that because Peter did, remember? He did, but Judas didn't recover, did he? Judas ended up dying. Because an offense will kill you. If you ever want to die, get an offense. Get an offense. It will kill you. Jesus had to deal with both those types before he went to the city. It's in the scripture. He had to deal with both those types. A commitment and a decision. For better and worse. You got to make a decision. I would advise and encourage every one of y'all this week. Sit your butt down and get still and examine where you at. Catch all your shucking and jiving areas and all. Bring yourself to a place where you are committed. It should be at least five areas of your life where you are committed. And if you are committed in all five of those areas, you will be all right with relationships. If you are committed emotionally, physically, financially, mentally, and spiritually, you will be all right. But if all you're doing is making decisions in them areas, something is going to be broken somewhere. It's going to be broken. If you are a husband and wife and you can't come together, if you can't come in a vow regarding things financially and all you do is make decisions about it and it's not a committed vow, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be ugly. You have to make a vow. You've got to vow to yourself. And I'm not going back. Not a decision. You have to make a vow. A vow will keep you. A decision can't keep you. Decisions change. Vows don't change. Vows don't change. We got so many divorces in the world now. I'm a divorced person. But guess what? I'm not divorced because of a vow. I'm divorced because of a decision. A decision. My appeal to you today, based off of the power of the Holy Spirit that I know rests in me and is in this room, this week, figure out where you're at. Figure out where you are. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. There is a great demand on this house. I make no apologies for it. Maybe that is the reason why it's not filled. Because I make no apologies for it. You cannot play here. I don't play. I'm not perfect. And I don't expect neither of you to be. But I do expect you to be committed. Because that's what God requires. That we be committed people. Stop half-stepping with stuff. Be committed. Quit playing games. You will see benefits of your life, man. My commitments bring all kinds of benefits to me, man. I'm so committed. And I don't feel like I do as good as I should. And I'm not tooting my horn, so please don't think I, I'm saying that I've arrived because I haven't. But what I'm saying to you is I'm on that journey. I'm on the road. With, I'm on committed road. I ain't no decision road. I know that. I'm not on decision road. I can't do decision road no more. I can't. It requires too much out of you. It makes you lose too much. You get hurt too much on decision road. You get hurt too much. Because emotions are up and down on decision road. Yes, People will be with you and they'll leave you on decision road. 
But vow, you ain't ever got.